Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Hey, look, look at you. Today, we are clearly not at our normal spot in our home because we are at an Airbnb. Yep, we got a little getaway. Yep, a little getaway. We, I think we mentioned in one of our videos how we were making a commitment to try and get away quarterly, just yep. like, at least like one night. Yep, just so, every, every few months, get away at least for one night. It's tough with eight kids and all their schedules to get away like that, but we committed this year. So we're is. good for one quarter so far. Yeah. The point of all that, actually, we thought it'd be a great idea to do a video here at our little cabin in the woods is because it kind of goes along with the topic that we wanted to talk about today, which is, well, which should come first, the marriage or the children? And that's particularly pertinent to blended families right? because the kids came before the spouse. In a normal nuclear family, uh -huh. she would come before the kids but the kids came before her. So there's this dynamic that comes into play for both her kids and for my kids of all of a sudden there's this other person who, according to our, our faith and what we believe God's designed for marriage, this person now takes precedent over the kids. And I think that's really tricky because in a traditional nuclear family, your children have a biological connection to both people. And so there's this natural instinct in them to want the marriage to like, come first and when and when mom and dad are taking time away from the kids away from them like i i just know there's, there's just no you know when my mom and dad i came from a marriage that's still you know uh my parents still together plus 30 years. plus years when they got away you didn't think twice of it now when we and her get away that's time mom's taking time away from me for some guy right that's, which which actually we try to get away when the kids are with the other parents. which we did this weekend so it doesn't really affect them yeah, but I hope the point is clear, like, and what we're trying to say, when there's not that biological connection, we're, like, worried there are bears. <laughs> that was just very loud. <laughs> we're, like, if you guys have seen um, the show The Waltons, we're, like, in that, that mountain. I think the museum is, like, like right down the road, yeah. the Walton Mountain Museum. Yep. All right, mom. So before you come at me, um, I get that this can be especially difficult. I feel like for women, because it's like, how can you put your, um, your husband, your spouse over your biological children? And I think there are a couple of things to like understand here. First, we're not saying at all that our children's needs are not fully met. Right. Right. Not, I mean, children have everything they need, right? Like just full stop. Like that's valuable. That's important to us. It's not what we're saying here, but what we are saying, it's kind of like when you go get on an airplane and they're like the oxygen masks drop parents, make sure you put yours on first before you put your child's on. You are going to be no good for your child if you are in distress. And so that's kind of how we view like putting our marriage first. It's it gives oxygen in place through to the rest of the family, to the rest of the kids. If we're good, the house is good. Right. I honestly feel like the best gift I can give my children is an example of a healthy, godly marriage that stands the test of time. Right. Because ultimately the truth, we're not, we're very, we try to be very self-aware. We both come from two failed marriages, whatever the reasons they fail. And we get that. And we're doing our best with this second chance that God has given us to do it right. But we think this is an amazing opportunity to show our children that you can come back from failure and you can come back well. Yeah. And so we believe that God's design for marriage is, and I feel like you can see it in, uh, when Paul is discussing, you know, he starts with husbands right. and then he goes on to talk to the wives and then he goes on to give in the order, he goes on to the children. And we just feel like God's order for prioritizing uh, family is, Marriage first, children second. And again, as with everything, what we find in life is that God's design works best. One thing plays through to the next thing. A healthy marriage plays through to healthier kids, which plays through 
on and on and on into the legacy, the grandkids and so on and so forth. A healthy marriage is literally like the anchor of your home. It, it literally just business. anchors your home. If your marriage is in shambles, like we have both experienced, it can have um, a profoundly negative effect on your children. So now we want to move into like the question, well, what does that practically look like? Putting your marriage first. Right. What in, in the day to day, what does that look like? And I think there are some great things that you can do. Here are two things that I can immediately think of. Um, when we come home, we try really hard. They're the, she's the first person I go to when I come home from work, babe, no matter what the kids need, Hey, give me a minute. I'm going to talk to Shirley. Hey guys, can you go out? Let me just talk with Shirley. The for children a can overwhelm yeah, Especially us, with they, literally. dad, I need this. Dad, I need this. Dustin, I need this. They meet you, know? you at the door and it's like, whew. as soon as you walk in and it's, Hey, and I take 15 minutes, 10 minutes. We go in the office or we Let stand me go in the find kitchen. Shirley. Let me go find your mom. Let and me. Yeah. And you do that. You yeah. always come give me a kiss and yeah. ask me how my day was going and things like that. And that's a very practical, very easy, but it can be, it's easy to say, but it can be harder to do when the kids overwhelm you. And also like what we're doing this weekend, prioritizing time away alone together. Um, because we do have what we like to jokingly call our perma kid. Right. <laughs> our little Caden, our caboose. We call him our permanent kid. So we have him all the time. And, um, He's a lot. <laughs> he is. Oh my gosh. We both had largely really easy kids. Woo. Yeah. He is not. So thanks to the grandmas, shout out to them yeah. because they're watching him so that we could have like a little getaway this weekend. And then another practical thing that I think is really important. We talked about this from church a couple weeks ago because the pastor talked about it. The bedroom is our space. That yeah. is not the children's space, especially with the blended family dyna dynamic. There's even more to that, but you know, very intentionally going, hey, Dad, I don't want to sleep with my kids, especially because I was single for like five years. We're very used to just and they would in just my room. like come in the room, just barge. They were just used to that because nothing bad. It's just I was single. I when they barge into my room, I didn't care. I didn't say, "Hey, guys, knock before you." Do. I just did it, and so they just came into the room, and so I had to very gently teach them, "Hey, there's a difference now." And that was that was my daughter still forgets that sometimes. That was just, an adjustment. Learning, I have to like knock before I can go in. Yeah. dad's room now so. they kids adjust well if you're just gentle and you're loving yeah and you make sure that you spend time with the children and that kind of plays into another thing you know we really make sure we spend intentional time with our children oh yeah so our, that they they don't feel forgot yeah when our kids are home like it's almost because we both share 50 50 it's almost like the rest of the world stops and our complete and entire focus right. it's on anything. it's on our family on our children yeah. There have been times we've been invited to parties or things like that on weekends that land with our kids. And we, we for no. the most part, we say no because we already don't have them half the time. So don't feel like our children are neglected. That is like not it at all. When they're with us, because they get the majority of our time, focus and attention, when they're not with us, we um, try to be super intentional on our marriage. Now, if our marriage is struggling and we have our children with us, what does that look like? What does that look like? That's a really great point. Um, it really means making sure this doesn't bleed over the children. If we're having a disagreement it's, or we're, yeah, we're struggling, you know, we're, a, if you're a step parent, you know, you know, very well, the tensions that can come up between you and your spouse when you're trying to navigate my kids, your kids, all of that. We are not um, immune from that. We have had our moments, especially the first probably the second year was actually the hardest for us after everything settled in and people got comfortable. And so we had to really navigate how do we handle these disagreements that at times got just, you know, the emotions were very intense. And what we, what we normally did was we would table it. The kids are coming home. The kids are about to walk in the door. We table this, but the, the important part of that is when you table it, you have to circle back to it. Right. You have, you just have to. Right. Um, another thing I thought of that we do to keep our marriage first is we go to counseling. Yes, we do. And we, we have a whole video about how we really value counseling, but yeah. yes. So we, we go see a counselor and that's just like another practical way that we have chosen to put our marriage first. Going to counseling is a wonderful, safe place where both of you know what you're getting into when you walk into it, where you can express some of those things that in the day to day, you just can't bring up because there's so much going on because again, you both have biological children. You both have little things that maybe aren't rational, logical, <laughs> but emotionally you feel. 
And you know you have to swallow those because we're adults and we have the maturity that says, hey, this is not, you need to just let this go. But going to counseling and ex being able to express that in an environment that is safe with a mediator has been great for our marriage. It's really huge. Yeah. And well, I think I'll end with this, or we can end with this, that we all know that the end game is children grow up and they leave the nest. The end goal is for these kids to leave one day. And so what are you left with once they're gone? You're left with your marriage. I'm left with you, babe. I'm left with you, babe. <laughs> and so that's that's a big reason why marriage should just come first. After the kids are growing gone, they're just there for such a short amount of time and your marriage should be for a lifetime. Our second marriage, um, we plan on it lasting a lifetime. Yeah. And so we aren't always gonna have those babies with us. Nope. And most of our time on this planet, truly a nice time is going to be without our kids. I love that. So this time is really important. I mean, this is such a short time in the big scheme of things. Yeah. So. So yeah, this time with our children is really important, but ultimately it's just going to be him and I in the long haul. So, all right, guys, thanks for coming along and listening to our topic chat for today. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.